Hello and welcome my friends and viewers to this week's episode of Legend Lore, where I draw and talk about monsters, characters, guys, and other things from D&D 5th edition, while giving a small but quickly digestible history about them. Together we'll go over their origins within the game, how they're utilized in the modern edition, and how you guys can utilize them in your own games. This week we will be covering Volothamp Gedarm, famed Forgotten Realms explorer and writer of the Volo's Guide series of informative works. Volothamp, often shortened to Volo as both a nickname and for use in his published writing, is a famous traveler, sage, minor wizard, and storyteller, known mostly for his guides published through Tim Waterdeep Limited, a publishing company located within the legendary city of Waterdeep. Often seen as the quintessential go-to guy for all there is to know within the Forgotten Realms, most of his actual information was at best half-accurate or bloated and exaggerated for the sake of entertainment. His writing was seen more as an excuse to travel and see the world, involving himself in all manner of shenanigans and danger in order to sate his curiosity. Despite often getting in over his head and realizing the danger a little too late, such as when he was caught in a goblin camp and forced to dance during the events of Baldur's Gate 3, he was always able to carve out a solution and have fortune smile upon him in the form of the appearance of finely timed allies. In terms of his personal abilities, Volo, despite carrying the visage of a bard, was a wizard of moderate skill, specializing in the discovery and casting of rare and unusual spells, as well as inventing some of his own, most of them concerned with the acquisition and documentation of knowledge and lore. I believe this is where things like the floating quill would come from. As a scholar, his focus of study was on spells and the activities of mostly human wizards, followed closely by the study of geography and the ancient lore of known human histories, civilizations, and ruins of the Forgotten Realms. Despite his reverence for the activities of wizards, however, several powerful ones often confronted Volo soon after the public of his works, angered that he had revealed their spells and personal discoveries to the world without their explicit permission. This often sent Volo into hiding, using the excuse of traveling to document the storied lands of Faerun in order to justify his need to flee from the wrath of wizards. Yet, despite earning the enmity of most wizards, Elminster, the sage of Shadowdale himself, edited, annotated, and provided prefaces for most of Volo's guides, recording both his amusement and at times exasperation towards Volo's actions, as well as his exaggeration and penchant for gossip. It was to the point that Velo's works and lack of discretion would risk exposure of dangerous knowledge, as well as put readers in danger due to their consumption of information that was just plain and accurate. Yet still, Elminster worked hard to both temper Volo's need to embolden his tales, as well as nurtured his skill for spying and getting in and out of dangerous situations, while making sure that the lore he was given was polished and refined to the point of usability. Volo was also known to be infatuated with a cold and beautiful merchant wizard by the name of Sasani, mostly during his time working with a merchant company operating near the city of Neverwinter. Now, in terms of piloting Volo at the table, his history and lore seems to depict him as a classic bumbling comic relief trope. The fool who gets in over his head, requires saving by the party of adventurers, and then writes a story Story about it with said adventurers appearing as a footnote towards the end of the piece. As such, this makes him very easy to play, but offers little in terms of character depth or the presence of goals. Having a character crack jokes and make comments on a situation is easy to do, but if you really want your players to at least find Volo worth keeping around, then here's a couple of recommendations on what I would do when he makes an appearance. Volo is a traveler and scholar by heart, and while he does have the reputation for emboldening his tales, I would say that usually comes from after he's back from his adventure and is sitting down to consolidate his writing and write the collected notes into a publishable form. While he himself is on the road, he he doesn't have the chance to fill his tales with drama and false occurrences, so most of the lore that he has is for the most part accurate and clear from pure observation. As such, when the party meets him, have him contain a wealth of information that he simply spouts out whenever the player mentions something offhand or needs aid with something like a riddle or a puzzle. Definitely don't have Volo give all the answers right out of the gate, but let the players give it their best shot until they have seemed to have exhausted all of their options. This sudden burst of progression due to Volo's knowledge will plant the idea that he may be useful down the road, be it identifying magic items, exploring ancient dungeons and ruins, or knowing who's who within politics as well as the dirty skeletons that they may hide in their closet. Volo is a gossip after all, so if players find a noble or an NPC they don't like and wish to find dirt on, Volo would be more than happy to supply it. Volo can also be used as a precursor to introduce a more powerful and high-ranking character in the Forgotten Realms, particularly wizards like Elminster, Snillock, or maybe even a particularly generous Red Wizard of Thay. He can have knowledge of a goal or an object that said wizard seeks, and if the party completes said job or collects said item and brings it back to the wizard, they'll be able to start the relationship on good footing rather than just appearing as a random set of rat catchers. Lastly, whenever I specifically like to portray Volo, I forgo his normal stat block seen in the 5th edition adventure Tomb of Annihilation in favor of building my own using the Scribes Wizard subclass. I usually only keep him around level 4 to 5 in order to keep his skill moderately low, but the Scribe Wizard's Awakened Spellbook and Wizardly Quill abilities match him very perfectly in my opinion, especially if you portray the spellbook as heavily opinionated and bickering with him every second of the day over his writings. Think of characters like the Magic Carpet from Aladdin or any sentient weapon in the DMG, with the spellbook wanting to tell the story how it factually is and Volo wanting to engross it with excitement and drama at the expense of accuracy. In terms of combat, Volo's normal stat block is fine enough if you slap additional subclass abilities from the Scribe's Wizard, but I do prefer 
prefer to give him some more divination spells such as scrying, sending, or even legend lore given the inquisitive nature of his work. All this is to say, he won't be on the front lines throwing spells and taking all the glory. Volo will be hiding behind cover, slinging one spell per round, and letting the rest of the party do all the work. He's a scholar, not a fighter, and he makes no attempts to portray himself as any different than that, unless he's in the safety of his home and able to write and embellish his stories with untrue acts of heroism. In terms of quests involving Volo or ways you can stick him inside of your games, Baldur's Gate 3 provided a very simple way that is adaptable to almost any sort of situation, monster, location, or adventure. Volo simply was caught trespassing and has since been forced to sing and dance for the people who caught him, be they goblins, lizard folk, orcs, or whatever else. When the party comes across him, he will whisper for them to aid in his escape, in exchange for providing his notes regarding anything the players might be interested in, such as the location of an item, information on a mark the party is pursuing, or the mapping out of a nearby dungeon. Your players may then respond accordingly and earn the debt and favor of a storied explorer of the world that they can call upon later on in the campaign. On the flip side, however, the party can instead be tasked by a wizard to hunt down Volo, the wizard being disgruntled with the writings and tall tales that Volo has been spinning about them. Whether the wizard wants the party to simply rough Volo up a little bit, or kill him, that's up to you as a dungeon master, but he will present them with a fine reward in exchange for bringing the bard to him. The party can then travel and pursue Volo across the realm, and upon being discovered, he will make a counteroffer, similar to the ones described previously. Either that, or he can instead plead with the party that what he wrote about the wizard was indeed true, providing proof and pieces that uncover a greater conspiracy. Depending on how bad the truth may be, the party can be convinced to turn on their patron, exposing him to the world with Volo's proof and earning themselves both some new prestige and a new enemy. Above all, Volo is not a monster stat block for your party to fight. He will always concede before he gets severely hurt, and use his words to talk his way out of any situation, making big promises and insisting that he can provide something that the enemy desperately needs, even if he may not necessarily have it. As such, this frees you and your party up to have some roleplay encounters with him instead of combat. But if you really want to make things a little bit more difficult, or if your table is more combat oriented, perhaps Volo has hired some mercenaries to protect him from the wrath of those that he writes about. Now in terms of magic items, Volo himself doesn't really carry any notable items from what I understand, so my recommendation recommendation would be to give him things that allow him to escape or avoid being detected. Items such as potions of invisibility or darkness, scrolls of misty step in gaseous form, or even an amulet of proof against detection and location if you want to get to the higher tier magic items. Volo's method is to get in, record what he sees, and then get out. So make sure the items he has on his person make it easy for him to do so without being discovered. And lastly, for our homebrew magic item this evening, we have the Fiscal Spellbook, which requires attunement by a wizard. This plus one spellbook gives a plus one bonus to spell save DCs and your spell attack rolls while attuned to it. And when writing spells in this specific spellbook, the amount of time and the gold price required to record spells is halved, meaning that instead of each level requiring 2 hours and 50 gold pieces per spell level, it instead requires 1 hour and 25 gold pieces per spell level. Lastly, once per day, the bearer of this item can write a sentence within the book's pages. Something factually said, such as the Baron's son is not his biological child, or the Guildmaster's brother is dead. And the statement will be treated as if it were said under the effect of the spell Zone of Truth, telling the wielder whether or not the statement is a lie. Spells and items that defend against divination magic still work against this effect if they are cast or worn by the subject in question, but this can allow your players to be a little bit more creative with their inquiry. This item is made mostly to allow wizards to funnel more spells into their book without having to sacrifice it for other things such as potions, magic items, property, bribery, and so on, but it also allows a new degree of roleplay with the book's truth-telling ability. Now, disclaimer, just because the magic book says something is true doesn't mean that your party can go to the masses and hold it up as gospel. People are suspicious, distrusting, and can easily say that the book is forged to simply say what the party wishes it to. This item simply makes it easier for you as a DM to provide them with information and secrets via a new angle, allowing them to follow new leads and investigate new paths without having to create an entirely new NPC to give them that information. I've included the item stat block in the description below, and with that, that's Philo Tham Get Arm, everybody. I want to thank all of you guys for watching, and if you guys enjoyed this video and think other Dungeon Masters might benefit from it, please like it, share it around, comment down below how you guys have used Volo in your games, and also please subscribe and press the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. If you guys want a chance to vote on the subject of the next video, please follow the link in the description and cast your vote in the polls. And also, let me know what you guys would like to see in upcoming videos. But until then, I'll see you guys next time.